Ooh, just got back from a nice little bike ride. Unfortunately, it's now raining. <laughs> yeah, about 11, 12 miles down um, part of the um, Pennine Trail. Mandy had to give up early, so she's back working again because <laughs> the battery died. So uh, yeah, got some nice little tracks in up and over like railway lines over the top and everything like that rather than just a flat track. I have to say part of the flat track was the flattest flat train track kind of thing I've ever seen. Totally tarmacked. Um, but like I said, then I found this uh, off to one side, proper old track through the trees and everything. So that was pretty cool. But I just thought I'd um, bring you up to speed with um, the Cy Russia Kamada because I've done a lot of upgrades to it and um, done a couple of hundred miles to it as well now. And I'm really, really, really loving it. So I'm going to go through what I've done with it and um, yeah, you can so just see whether it's a, an upgrade or whatever you want to do to yours. So the first thing that made the biggest difference to me were the tires and the tires on the original one are pretty much the same on all the 20 by four fat tire e-bikes, tiny little knobblies and, uh, and they buzz down the road like a bee. So they're a bit much of a kind of like just fill it in kind of tire, you know, they'll work all right on this one, they'll work all right on this one. Um, but the buzzing got to me a little bit. So I've upgraded the tires on it, um, which are more, well they're a bit more sort of badass bfg ko2 kind of tires so bigger knobbly bits in there uh, which means they're actually better for on road and actually better for mud and, and gravel and things like that so they've got more depth tread to grab and move the gravel around and um it does also mean that they're better for punctures as that as well and um, because the the surface area um, is now more tire tread than it is the sort of like just rubber part of the tire with tiny little nobbles on the top, which is the original ones, which can quite easily get thorns and bushes and, you know, jagged stones and everything puncturing through the tire part. Whereas these are a lot more thicker and robust tread on there. Um, so that'll help with that. Um, and while I was pulling, obviously, the, the front and rear wheels apart and taking them apart to put the new tires on, um, I also put some muck off goop or whatever you want to call it, uh, puncture repair um, fluid inside the front and rear inner tubes. So hopefully now I'm going to um, hopefully not suffer from a puncture in a way that it's going to stop me from you know, a ride out or having to wheel the bike back or whatever. Um, and so far, yeah, I am loving the new tires. Um, so much more grip and so much quieter and a little bit more nimble, I'd say, on the road as well. So it feels like on the road, I've got more grip. Um, certainly braking wise, you notice it a lot more under braking on the road as well. Seems I was using it a little bit more on road and some of the trails that I was using a bit more steep and things like that. Um, I wanted to change the uh, grips to bar end grips. Originally, I was just going to get some bar ends and put them on. Um, on our first ever sort of like trial into e-bikes, um, when we got the motorhome um, sort of like back in 2020, um, we got folding mountain bikes, 21 gear mountain bikes. Uh, and we enjoyed riding them a lot. Um, but I would say oh, maybe after 20 minutes, half an hour of different terrains and going uphill, um, you, uh, your hands kind of don't really want to do that on the, on the bars to kind of give you some grip. You want to do that. You've got more strength pulling that way. Um, so bar ends was what I upgraded both bikes to. 
and um, and that gives you more grip when you're trying to pull on the bars on handlebars um, to pull up a hill you know to actually get you going get you pedaling up a hill um, so I found some new grips that included palm rests and let's say the bar ends all in one um, and my bike didn't come with palm rests uh, whereas the my rider handlebars um, grips did have palm rests and they are quite nice actually for for long term you know riding around so yeah the grips i've got now are palm wrist um palm rest grips with bar end grips on the end um so you just pull the old ones off pop the new ones on uh, and then they've got two fixings at either end um, with little allen keys so they properly grip on there um, and they're tightened up on there and on one side because i've got the thumb control on there um, i just chopped it down a little bit uh, and that's been fine so uh, yeah tightened back up and everything works fine a um, couple of other little things as well um, I was missing some bags just to store some tools um, and a pump and things like that so I've got a little bag that goes under my seat and um, that has um, a tiny little sort of um, toolkit in there all in one toolkit with allen keys and um, uh, some sockets, some screwdrivers and little spanners and all that kind of stuff. So that goes in there along with the puncture repair kit. Should I ever need one or come across somebody, you know, if I'm riding with somebody um, and they need a puncture repair kit, then that's in there as well. Um, and there's also a Leatherman um, toolkit and everything else in there as well. And that just fits underneath the seat. And that's really, really comfy. On the front, I needed somewhere to put a drink um, and I couldn't really find anywhere that I wanted to drill into the frame or um, you know, with it being a quite a chunky frame and very strange angles, um, I couldn't really find anywhere that I would maybe want to um, zip tie, you know, a, a bottle holder or anything like that too. So I found these, apparently they're supposed to be able to fit your phone and everything in the front, but with my little flasks in there, um, it literally is just enough to hold, you know, the bottle or the flask, whatever. Um, and that's great. It's got three points of contact on there. So I put it around the top of the forks and then the um, head stem. And that's been great. It does kind of kick to one side because my um, front frame sort of a bit of an angle. So it doesn't kind of rest like that easily enough. It wants to do that and then kicks off to one side. So yeah, it holds it. I get a drink while I'm out. So that's all right. Um, and then I've got another bag on the front, um, which is across the handlebars, um, which is, um, again, it's got a few little bits of tools in there. It's got a cover for my bike seat. Um, and yeah, I put my other bits and bobs in there, put my phone in there and, you know, sort of other bits and bobs. If I'm out and about, I can get, uh, you know, little bits of bobs in there for snacks or whatever. And I've also got on my rear carrier, um, a little bag, which actually makes out to be uh, a backpack. So that tiny little bag comes quite a big um, backpack enough that we've been able to get quite a lot of shopping in there, you know, like, a, I don't know, 12 pack of beer. Um, some other bottles of stuff and food and everything nip into the shop. So that's quite a nice one as well. It's coming along, um, but there's a couple of little niggly bits. So the seat I've changed, I bought a seat, it's a gel seat, but it's got the springs in the back to give me a bit more sort of comfort on there. And I also copied this off um, the other bike that I tried recently, which was the sprung seat post or the shock absorbing seat post. So I've put that in as well. Um, and that's made by Zoom um, and it comes with a little collar adapter as well. It comes with actually a couple of collar adapters so that it can take up the space, whether it be, you know, a huge amount of, uh, of space that you've got left over in your um, seat post um, sort of like locking area or if a, a little bit or whatever, but it comes with little bits of collar adapters so that you put the collar adapters in and then the new seat post and then you can lock it all down and that fits, you know, pretty much every seat post that um, I could think of at the time. I tried them on different ones and they all sit in there. So that gave me a very, very, very comfortable rear ride. Um, and the reason why I've done that is that my biggest, biggest, and probably only uh, narky bit that I don't like about the bike is that the crank is too low to the ground for me. Now it's got rear suspension on it. Um, and what I'm finding is that obviously going over terrain or, you know, as you're cycling away, you're bobbing up and down because of the rear suspension, it's giving. Um, and as it gives, um, the rear of the bike dips, which includes the crank. So the crank dips down, uh, which means the pedal dip down. So for example, if you're going around a roundabout, forget pedaling, because as you're pedaling and dipping and going up and down, um, you'll find that the pedals ground out on the road and that can kick you off 
Um, or another one I found is out on the trails. You know, the more you get a rutted trail, the more the pedals catch on either side of the rut. So you're catching grass or mud or whatever. Or today on this little track that I was out on, as it got really sort of like tricky and interesting around trees with, you know, sort of uh, tree roots and rocks everywhere, um, I caught the pedal on a tree root. And obviously those things don't want to give. So that nearly threw me off and down an embankment as well. So that was a bit of a pain. Um, I try and pedal now as flat as I can on the pedals. So they're not sort of dipping down at all. And that helps a little bit. But what I'm thinking is adjusting the rear uh, suspension layout. Um, so actually removing the shock absorber altogether and then putting a, a steel rod or something in its place. It actually raises um, the crank, even just an inch would do, a few centimetres would do, um, just to give me, um, like I say, that movement in the crank so that I can go and pedal around roundabouts or pedal through rutted areas and not worry about being thrown off the bike. So I've done a couple hundred miles on the bike now, probably had it about five, six weeks or so. Um, really enjoying it. Um, do find it's brilliant, it's got loads of power. Um, I'm still looking at changing the rear cassette uh, for something like a, a 3011 or a 3012. Um, but I'm really struggling. I've been to a couple of bike shops now, and phoned up a few bike shops. Um, and it's so funny because they all look in the same places I'm looking at. They just go online and search for it. I'm like, well, that's pretty pointless, isn't it? I thought a bike shop would have, you know, access to more stock than I can get. But no, one guy even said, if you go and find it on Amazon, then bring it in, we'll fit it. Well, yeah, thanks, mate, but I can fit it myself, thanks. So, yeah, that's maybe one more future little upgrade. But, um, yeah, loving the bike. I just thought I'd give you a bit of an update about how I'm using it and, um, you know, what I've changed and why. And, um, yeah, once it stops raining which I think it might have just about done. Uh, waiting for Mandy's bike to recharge because the My Rider doesn't have so much of the range. Um, was it that or was it the fact you forgot to charge it last time out? Forgot to, forgot to charge it last time out. Rookie mistake. I know, I know. <laughs> so yeah, so um, yeah, get them charged and then hopefully if the weather books up, because it's supposed to be a heat wave this weekend. <laughs> it's not looking at it right now. I mean, look at that. Yeah. So yeah. Hope you all have a good weekend and um, I shall see you very soon. Take care, folks. Bye.